Okay, so we are officially live. Today is July 14th. It's Wednesday, of course. This is Reflection Artist Live podcast number 37, and I have special guest Ashley Nye with, uh, sorry, uh, Ultra Look Corporation, manufacturer of car candy products. So it's actually a family-owned business. They have three companies within that umbrella to say as a whole for the family and uh they've been in the industry a long time the one of the older companies is uh 23 years old so she's been around the industry for a while however car candy has been around for 13 years now and she's uh president of that side of it for automotive detail and products and so we want to dig into ashley's background and you know what has brought her into the wonderful world of detailing and uh, of course, thank you, Ashley, for being on. And so we want to get a little background on how all of this got started and what inspired you to get into the, to the industry, other than, of course, the, the family side of the thing. All right. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, I'm really excited to be here, especially for July, you know, Women in Detailing Month. Absolutely. Um, but I actually started, so I went to college at USF, um, switched my major 5,000 times as most college kids do. Uh, graduated in 2008, but all through college, I was working at Mannheim Auto Auction over in Tampa. Oh, yes. And I was a block clerk. So I you know, was working on the block with the auctioneers, loved that job, was a blast. Um, as soon as I graduated college, they offered me a management position and I would have been actually one of the youngest managers at Mannheim at that time. Um, but my dad also needed some help with his chemical company, Interstate Chemical, over in Lakeland. And he was looking for an outside sales rep. So, you know, I kind of weighed both options. And I was like, you know, what better than to obviously help out your family? Yeah. I knew nothing about chemicals. You know, I think the only chemical I knew at the time being what 22 years old was acetone <laughs> I knew they used that to do nails that was it so I started with him doing outside sales kind of you know he kind of threw me to the wolves in a good way though there's really no handbook anybody can hand you as to what every single raw material and solvent and surfactant is out there on the market and what it's used for um, so I just started going on the road outside sales, you know, visiting places, knocking on doors, uh, selling other manufacturers. So, you know, other companies that even made cleaning products, uh, boat manufacturers, just a bunch of different industries. And during that time, you know, I'd made a lot of really good relationships and I was calling on a lot of detail shop, just, you know, detail distributors that were selling products. And they started saying, Hey, can you make a degreaser? Can you make, you know, a tire dressing? And, you know, they Some kept the throwing, basics. exactly. They kept saying, you know, are, are these things that you can make? And went back to my dad and, you know, he was obviously really focused on interstate chemical. And he's like, if you want to do something, you know, along those lines, go for it. But I, you know, <laughs> I, I'm at the point in my life where I don't necessarily want to go do this whole startup again. So I started going around, I mean, and just talking to people saying, you know, what is it that you're looking for? Um, and then we actually had an opportunity to purchase one of, I would say like our customers, uh, they had a detail route at the time, you know, going around to dealerships, car washes, selling off the truck. And so he that approached us perfectly with listening to yep. the community and, and the market of what their wants and needs were, and then being able to have that opportunity that aligned you perfectly to make things happen exactly so of course you know we jumped on that and from there we already had you know an established kind of you know small book of business with that one route truck so we had these relationships with the detailers i was going out i mean asking questions again you know what is it that you're looking for what kind of products do you need to make your job easier uh gonna save you time I've always been under the kind of assumption or that, you, you know, you don't need 10 different degreasers as a no. detailer. You know, there's a, there's a lot of products that can be kind of multi-use. So, uh, but kind of 
backing backing up here. Uh, we to your point, there, that, there uh, are product companies out there that make a product that is a degreaser that's just diluted at different ratios and they slap a different name on it. This one's for right. a Mustang. This one's yep. for this. This one's for, and it's like, really, it's all the same stuff, just diluted differently. So that's- Or a of, different color or yeah. a different fragrance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, different dye or different fragrance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all more. So that's exactly right. And so we, I did, you know, we ran that route for uh, maybe about a year. And during this time, I was still doing, again, a lot of market research, just really hitting the ground, just visiting places, you know, not working, obviously, 40 hours a week, you know, seven days a week from basically morning to night and just doing a lot of market research. And finally, we're like, okay, we need a brand, you know, our own line of products, um, the actual name itself. My dad and I, I think we're driving to Miami to go visit a customer for something. And we were just kind of brainstorming in the car. Like, well, what, what should we name it? I'm like, I don't know. It needs to be something, you know, eye catching. And when you, you know, when you, when you see the cars go down the road, it needs to be like eye candy. And we're just throwing out all these different things. And then finally I go, oh my, I was like, I have an epiphany, car candy. And he looks at me and he goes, that is perfect. And I think that night in the hotel, I went online, trademarked it, and then kind of started, uh, again, building and developing our product line. We hired a consultant chemist at first, you know, as starting up, obviously, and then hired him on full time and just, again, started developing the product line. I'd sit up at night and I would do all of the labels and the marketing because that's kind of my background uh, is mass communications and marketing. So I had some design experience and just basically, I mean, again, every single night going home, making a new product label and sending out samples pretty much all over the place for customers to test, doing a ton of field testing. Did you exercise um, the, the relationship that you had at the auction to get some of those things? I mean, that's a high production atmosphere. So that would really let you know in testing how well those things are. I did, but I didn't. So the auction, Mannheim auctions, they may be different now, but Mannheim at the time had a lot of, like they didn't have an in-house detail company. They kind of outsourced, like the dealers could use pretty much whoever they wanted to, um, to detail the cars or clean the cars at the auction. So, yeah. Um, and they had an auction at that time, like once a week. And that's really the only time, you know, they would, there would be any detailing going on at the auction. Um, but we just used our relationships with, again, the existing customer base we had and my distributors at the time, the ones that were asking for these new products. And that's really kind of where the, you know, where the product line developed. And it was really with a ton of help from, you know, professional detailers like yourself. I mean, telling us the good, the bad, and the ugly about the products. And then from there, um, Sorry, we... Like... <laughs> no, you're okay. <laughs> it's on your clipboard. Go look at the clipboard. Flip your paper back over. I promise you it is. She's looking for a pen because she was drawing. But you. from there, <laughs> tell her to tell her to get on the podcast. Yeah, it's Women in Detail Month. <laughs> <laughs> um, but from there, we then added on, you know, a few more route trucks to deliver to some of our, you know, local areas: Tampa, Orlando, Clearwater, and then we purchased a building down the road that was, I mean, it was a very small facility. A beautiful piece of land but there wasn't much on there as a you know like a warehouse i think we maybe had five thousand square feet at the time which for manufacturing and packaging and you know obviously employees too and offices yeah. it was we were kind of all on top of each other in the office it was that's just a one starting big, point though it is you know we were you know you could hear everything everybody was saying on the phone and eventually we got to a point where it's like, okay, we've got to start, you know, we put all of our profits 
even up to this point, back into the business to, you know, constantly keep building it and building it and building it. And we got to a point where it's like, okay, we, we're, we're out of space. You know, we're busting at the seams and we decided to add on an additional 40,000 square foot warehouse. It took about a year, year and a half to build. What, uh, at what point in time would you say you were in years of business before you added this 40,000 square warehouse? We've, warehouse? See, I think we've probably been in that warehouse now for two and a half years. Okay. So, I mean, fairly recently, I mean, I'd say within the past three years. So, you know, we were in business for roughly a little less than 10 years before we got to the point where it's like, okay, now, you know, we're, we're really scaling up here. Oh, bear with me. I lost my ear pod here. <laughs> um, and that warehouse, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. And that warehouse took about, like I said, a year, year and a half to build. And since we are a chemical company, you know, you got to go through a lot of different regulatory agencies and it takes 10 times longer to build anything. It's all got to be sprinklered and foam suppression and, you know, all the fun stuff, firewalls everywhere. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. So we finally moved in there and now that's obviously where we're at currently and you know we've got fully automatic packaging lines again we do make everything in-house um i've got now i'd say we've got amongst all three companies we have about over 40 employees we've got you know four route trucks on the road locally and then outside of that i set up distributors um, to service you know, customers and go to the, again, the car washes, detail shops, body shops. We do have a full line of body shop solvents as well, like lacquer thinners and reducers that we manufacture out of Daytona, Florida at our sister company called Southeastern Chemical. So we've got, you know, a lot of things covered the solvent side, the body shop side, and then of course the detailing and we sell accessories as well. Um, but yeah, that's kind of our story, you know, condensed in five minutes. <laughs> well, the the most inspiring thing is, again, because of this being, you know, July, women in detail, and like you had pointed out, you know, as a woman in a, you know, dominantly run or looked at kind of industry with males, you've taken something that regardless of gender, but you've just run with it and just made it happen. But that says a lot more because you are a female in a very male dominated industry. So that's you know, kudos to you in regards to just taking your vision, running with it and executing it at the level you find fit, but also finding areas that are a fit for what are the needs are, you know, manufacturing chemicals and being able to listen to the community locally and understand what their wants and needs are and being able to basically find a solution to someone's problem. And I think that's, you know, a huge thing in business, no matter what you do, is knowledge and asking yeah. questions and, you know, it might sound cliche, but it's true. I mean, not, knowledge is power. So, you know, I never, you know, I, I, I never detailed growing up, uh, but, you know, I asked a lot of questions and I got my hands dirty and I got out there, you know, in this Florida heat <laughs> with, you know, a lot of the detailers and I'm like, show me, you know, show me what it is that you do. Show me what you do that again, makes your job easier. and what products do you think are missing from your lineup that you wish you had? And, you know, I never walked in any, there's, there's no ego. I think that's another kind of piece of advice too, is in business, you know, you can't have an ego. You're never going to know everything. And I think that's a huge, again, piece of advice is, you know, make sure you're always asking questions, always learning. The industry is constantly changing. Yeah. So staying on top, joining the IDA, you know, or, or uh, partnering up with some other detailers in your area, going to training classes. I mean, it's, it's so, so, so important. No, it is. And, and, you know, to touch more too, in regards to like the direction and evolution of the, what you have developed, like with the first couple of chemicals, what were the first few chemicals that really took off for you? Uh, based on that kind of demand from the local community. So, well, actually I can use, 
I can show my my cup that shout out to Anthony at the detail specialist <laughs> making our my, making me this chocolate thunder cup. Um, but I would say the product that probably really put us on the map and what everybody really knows us for too is our chocolate thunder, which is our non acid wheel cleaner. Um, no, it was not named after Mark Elliott at Firehouse Auto Spa. <laughs> I, Although I he to, carries the name very well. I know. I, I had to throw that out because him and I joke about that all the time. Um, but, you know, this product, again, was developed because, you know, I was hearing constantly the detailers like, I hate cleaning rims. I hate it. It takes me the most time. You know, it breaks my back. Is there yeah. something out there that, you know, you have or can you develop something that makes the job of cleaning wheels you know 10 times easier and faster so that's where the chocolate thunder you know again non acid wheel cleaner came from and spray it on the wheels let it sit 30 seconds and then rinse it off and you're done i mean it dissolves the brake dust and again that's really i would say the product that uh kind of put us on the map in regards to the detailing products. Of course, we've got a full line of tire dressings as well and our uh, acid-based wheel cleaners. That's another one. We have some you know, pretty heavy duty acid-based uh, wheel cleaners as well. We do still make some with hydrofluoric acid. There's a demand uh, again, still. If you know how to use yeah. it, it's, it's that's successful. I was just going to say that. You got to know how to use it because if you don't, <laughs> You know, you could definitely cause some serious damage, but yeah, I mean, really, like I said before, a lot of our products have uh, been developed with help from the community. I mean, from the, the detailers and, you know, that's constantly where we're getting ideas and, you know, we listen to all the feedback from all of our customers, again, whether it's good or bad. I mean, that's how we make the products even better. Yeah, no, to, and to, to talk about, you know, the Chocolate Thunder product, ironically, I had, um, I don't know who, if they were working directly for you, Car Candy, but I had a rep come just randomly show up my shop. This probably was somewhere between, I would say 2012, maybe 2014 within those years. And uh, he dropped off a, a kit of products, sample products, and Chocolate Thunder is what captured my attention out of, you know, the other ones were good, but Chocolate Thunder is really what, in, you know, intrigued me to try the rest. And um, that stuff till this day, we use it in shop as our, one of our go-to products for cleaning rims. I mean, we have others as well, but when we need a rim without having to use acid and know it's safe and effective or tire with the blooming and the browning, that's what our go-to is. And it's, yeah, I mean, that product will never, We'll, we'll always have that product in our line for sure. And we did develop Chocolate Thunder Plus, which is just pretty much a more concentrated version of the original formula, but it does have some added solvents in it to really, again, aid in that, you know, cleaning capability. No, that makes sense. No, and it's, it's great seeing that that product has evolved itself to go into a plus category, but no, right. that's, <laughs> that's something that, again, that we have really enjoyed. And we, you know, we use quite a few other products, but overall, I mean, even the evolution of what you guys started with to where you are now, I mean, you started dipping into ceramic coatings and yep. that's been a huge success for you guys as well, because you've got a pretty good lineup. If you don't mind mentioning what that lineup is and how you came to that crossroad to be like, Hey, we want to get into coatings. So our ceramic coating line is called candy coat. And we started that line. Let's see. I got it. Your, I got to remember here. Uh, probably three years ago, I would say, maybe four years ago at this point. And you know, at the time, SiO2 ceramic products—they've been around for a very, very long time. It's just they were never, I guess you could say, marketed mainly to like the detailing industry. Mm -hmm. And you know, I go to all the trade shows, SEMA, and kind of started seeing little things here and there pop up uh, with actual ceramic paint coatings. And I'm really going back years and years now. So at the time, again, we've got a full-time chemist and I brought it to him. 
And I'm like, hey, is there something here with this? <laughs> you know, is this smoke and mirrors or is this the, like, is this the real deal? Yeah. And he goes, no, while. it's the real, yeah. He's like, it's the real deal. He goes, I, I do think it's going to be here for a while, like you said. And he just started, you know, developing stuff. It did not happen overnight, obviously. No, you know, a lot yeah. of, a lot of testing has to go into uh, developing, you know, ceramic coatings. And so now we do have three different coatings for paint. Uh, our first coating is like a elite. It's our three-year coating. We do not have to be certified on that. Anybody can purchase that. I wouldn't say it's a DIY for somebody, again, that's never, never done a ceramic coating, but that's going to be the easiest product, you know, to apply, I guess, the, the most forgiving product. Uh, our Pro, our Candy Coat Pro is our six-year coating, and our Candy Coat Premier is our nine-year coating. Both of those coatings do require certification. So because we do warranty those products, again, they're just a lot thicker of a product, harder, not hard to apply, but, you know, again, they're both 9H, you really yeah. need to know what you're doing. Um, and, and to your point with the thicker viscosity, it definitely takes, it's a learning curve, and it takes some training yeah. behind it to make sure you get it down right. Correct. And, you know, with our certification, uh, we do currently have two certified like installation centers. We're trying to open up more across the U.S. where detailers can go and actually get, you know, hands on full day training, um, two day training classes. And that is not just on the ceramic coating itself, but it's also, you know, the, the polishing, all the prep work ahead of time the maintenance after the fact, because the big thing with ceramic coatings, they're not bulletproof. Nope. You know, they're not, yeah. I mean, that's, and that's a lot of our training too, is, you know, making sure you're educating the customer and letting them know, okay, yes, your car's ceramic coated. It's going to be a lot easier to clean after this, but it doesn't mean you can go the next six or nine years without cleaning it. <laughs> you know, it still has to be maintained. So uh, Anthony actually with, with the detail specialist, he is one of our uh, certified trainers. So we are holding some classes coming up pretty soon at his shop for anybody that does want to become a certified installer. And also Kimball's hands-on detailing up in Washington. So that's our, you know, our West Coast training center. Uh, he's also going to be hosting some classes here very soon. And, you know, we're, again, looking for, of course, another training facility, you know, in, in the middle of the U.S. and then one kind of up towards the Northeast area as well. But, yeah. and then we do stop trainings at our facility in Lakeland. So. Hold on one second, actually. Okay. <laughs> Come here, girl. What did you do in your face? <laughs> stuff all over your face. You have your chips over there on the floor. Why don't you go grab those? I'll open them for you. Go grab them and I'll open them. <laughs> um, no, with those two training facilities, both Kimball's and Anthony, I mean, I think that's a you know good starting point. But again, the direction of talking about maintenance, that's where a lot of, mm -hmm. I don't think it's so much the manufacturer, although some do lack in that area, in that subject area. But, you know, the fact that you're coming on board, you know, and offering the coatings, keeping it simple, offering three, but really educating the customer on the importance of maintenance and, and promoting that, that's huge because that says a lot in regards to how the development of the coating industry. I really just popped it. I know you popped it, I heard you. <laughs> there you go. And um, it helps with the development of the industry overall with more getting on board because it is very important because they don't. I mean, it's they're there to replace the traditional products to last longer, to work better, to have all these great characteristics. But just like anything, maintenance yep. is key. I mean, oil change, things for the vehicle in general, anything that is going to get, you know, wear and tear, there's maintenance to help keep that wear and tear minimized. And exactly. that is huge. And I think with you guys diving into coatings, that has helped because it keeps, it keeps your company as a whole relevant because I did and have seen companies you know just take forever to get on board with the coatings and then by the time mm -hmm. they did come to the table things just weren't as successful as they anticipated because they were late you know late to the party to say 
Exactly. Um, but even that with taking a, you know, the approach that you did and having the right people with these brand ambassadors moving forward. Um, tell me, you know, how has that helped car candies, you know, in regards to the branding and, and getting the, the, the marketing out there a lot more? I mean, I think it's helped tremendously, you know, who better to, again, you know, rep your products or believe in your products. <laughs> she wants to chip. <laughs> Okay. Well, can you hold on? Yeah, I have popped them. I know, I heard you pop them. <laughs> <laughs> you got chips all over your face. Hi. You go get your wipes for me and I'll wipe your face. <laughs> go grab them. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, but what was it? Oh, the brand ambassadors. Yes. So, no, I, I think it's helped tremendously. Again, you know, who better to rep your products than an actual professional detailer that day in and day out, that's what they're doing. You know, I'm, I'm not out there detailing cars eight hours a day, you know, five or seven days a week. So to, you know, bring on these brand ambassadors that really believe in the product and believe in the brand itself. And, you know, want to be a part of our growing family. I mean, it, it's huge. I think it's kind of irreplaceable. And again, you know, those, my brand ambassadors that we bring on board, you know, they're my go-tos for, yeah. for a lot of stuff. You know, we bounce, we've all become, I mean, Anthony, I know I keep throwing Anthony out there, but Anthony was probably one of my first brand ambassadors. And, you know, I met Anthony when he was first starting out and it was over a phone call. He called the office. He was asking, I think a question about one of the products started talking hour later. I'm like, Oh God, we've been on the phone for an hour. And I'm like, hey, you know, I'm developing some products right now. Would you like to test some of them out? And he's like, yeah. So I actually went to his house, you know, never met, the, never met him before. First time meeting him. And, it, you know, the relationship kind of just flourished from there. And, but, you know, we're, we're always looking for, of course, you know, more brand ambassadors. Uh, and but you got, the, but you I got want, the male side covered. There might exactly. be an opportunity for some females as well and there might be and that is something that obviously i'm really interested in again being a you know female ran business especially like you said at the beginning you know in an industry that is very i would say male dominated um, i'd love to partner up with you know some female detailers and help really get the word out too that yeah, women so. can do everything a man can do right <laughs> Oh, absolutely. And level the playing field, you know, and it looks good for the industry car candy brand. I mean, just all across the board, it, it helps level the playing field to show that it's, it's not a gender based industry, even though obviously it, dominantly it is more one side than the other, but it doesn't have to be, and it shouldn't be because this is for anybody and everybody. And as we had talked about, it's also one of those kind of industries where this changes lives for people, you know, it's an easy startup, but at the same time, those who push and hustle to make it successful for themselves can really make a lifestyle and a career out of it, even though we're small businesses to say. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, you're right. You know, we, we had that conversation before. Um, I mean, you know, you're a brand ambassador or I'm not sure exactly what Buff and Shine calls you, but I mean, look what you've done too with your name and just being a, again, a big, you know, a key player in the industry, but that didn't happen overnight either. You know, that no. took, uh, you know, a lot of work building relationships and going again to all these trade shows. And that's, that, that's such a big, I know I keep touching on that, but it's such a big thing are relationships. You know, relationships are everything. And don't be worried about what the detailer or the guy down the road's doing, you know, become friends with them yeah. and collaborate. And again, you know, you're having an issue with some paint on a car and you're like, man, I've never done a Mercedes, you know, uh, I've never polished a Mercedes before. And this paint's kicking my butt, <laughs> you know, call somebody, you know, become like a men, you know, find a mentor in the industry that you can really lean on. That's going to, again, kind of help, you know, get you to that next level, get that yeah. knowledge. You know, and that, that, especially in your local community, I mean, whether it be, it doesn't matter what it's saturated with, whether it be more shops than mobile, more mobile than shops, or 
just a lot of everything or a little. You know, there's some people that are in the industry that are in very small communities, very small population in their cities or counties that still are able to network with the other local guys and, and build something together to help each other. And of course it helps too when a customer's calling around and they're realizing that, oh, you know, I, I had four people I called, three of them are all on the same page, but this guy, not so much, why? What, 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 and it, and it yep. leads to, yeah, to where the, question, the customer wants to question um, why, but when everybody's on the same page, oh, I see you got some wipes. <laughs> just a few of them. <laughs> just a few. Thank you. <laughs> you didn't have to bring me the, the wipes out of the package. I asked you to bring me the package. <laughs> no more though, okay? We don't want to waste those. Um, but it... Um, <laughs> <laughs> it allows everybody to be on the same page and it is very helpful because it, it makes a statement to where customers see that it's not a you know gypsy based community as it once was where right they you know, shopping around and they realize okay everybody's on the same page whether it be services or pricing but and it can be very helpful to the individual like you had made a point about if you're having a hard time on a paint system or an interior that you're not familiar with call someone who is to help get you over that hurdle exactly and, you know, like I said before, too, get, get rid of the ego, you know, don't think you know everything. I mean, no. and in a nice way, you know, don't think you know everything because, again, there's just, you know, people do things differently. You, you can talk to 20 different detailers and they all make cleaner rims slightly different or they all may polish, you know, slightly different, but you're picking up bits and pieces from each of those individuals. Yeah. Yeah, and you don't, you don't see the detail. It's funny because when you look at that, how you said everybody has a little bit of a different process. They're so quick to, hold on one second, baby. They're so quick to bash based on a coating brand, but they won't be quick to bash on the type of brush you use to clean around. Right, exactly. And it makes no difference because you're still getting the end result, whether it be the coating or the brush that you're using on the rim. So it's like, it's, and that shows you that it's purely ego because of that reason. Mm-hmm. And I mean, kind of touching on that coding thing too, I guess I'm asking you questions now, but I mean, where do you see, where do you see the industry going in regards to like, you know, the new graphene, you know, graphene is well, a new buzzword, obviously in the industry. So what I've, what I've watched, what I've learned is, you know, the majority is basically uh, it's a ceramic coating formulation that has the additive of that to help the characteristics be that much better than traditional coatings so you know as far as claiming there's 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 nothing really out there that i'm aware of yet that is a full hundred percent graphene there's i guess technical reasons why um most of it is more of an additive from what i've learned does it make the formulations that much more premium or better yeah there's there's definitely some better characteristics that we're seeing out of some of these uh formulas that these chemists have just really put some time into to to make mm -hmm. that happen um, now the marketing value of that, that's, that's a whole other level. That's just like when ceramics came out, obviously they were yep. marketing to make it sound like it was here when really it was here kind of scenario. And some, some of the coding chemistries pushed their way up there. And same thing with graphene. Some of the, some of them are better than others. You know, some of them are just quick to get out to market so they can make some money based on the hype right. and just like anything else. But I see that being a, uh, an evolving chemistry basically is what it comes down to is that they're finding different ways to approach ceramic by reinventing. Um, yes. Is there other chemistries that could add value? Absolutely. Such as graphene. Is it going to get better? Yes. And it has just like, you know, traditionally waxes, paint sealants, and you have right. the resin based stuff and some other weird stuff that have was in the limbo mix for a while. And then you get into the ceramics, right? Then you got the different formulations of ceramics that could be broke down. But there's those categories of evolution. And I think we're definitely on that wave. And even some of the self-healing stuff, we're not quite there yet, but give it 10 years, 20 years. And we look back and we're like, damn, right? When we thought ceramics were hot, we're right. going to be, yeah, we're going to be looking <laughs> at it like, well, that's pretty much like wax now. I mean, because the other side of that too is what they put into the market. Don't step over that. No, 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 no. Come here. Those are wires. Um, you go to the store, AutoZone, Walmart, any of these places, and you start to see a lot of major brands that have the 
you know, ceramic name on the bottle as hype, of course, for marketing. And right. a lot of these consumers don't realize that, that they just need to put 1% of that formula in there. Exactly. And, and they probably that, don't even need 1%. They can do 0.0001% and still say it contains ceramic or SiO2 or again, whatever. Yeah. yeah, it's all marketing. And that's where the consumer becomes a lot of smoke and mirrors and very misleading. And then when they go to a professional and the professional is charging X amount of dollars to do this, they're like, well, I just saw a bottle for 10 bucks. I can do it myself. All it's right. like, ah, yep. I'll see you after you use that bottle. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you can't argue with that. So, but that's really not the customer you want anyways. But no, to your point, I think there's definitely, uh, it's here to stay. And it's just one of those things for the, that adds to the evolution of what we're dealing with right now. Yes. Okay, can you wait till I'm done and then we'll get you more chips? What you see, I'm in a meeting. Look at. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's I think it's here, just like coatings. You know, in the beginning with coatings, a lot of people thought that, oh, it's just a fad, it's just a phase, it's just it's that. That's not nice. Um, and look at they're not going nowhere, and they've reached the public and they've reached the consumer market at a high level. So. Yeah. It's great for consumer awareness. I've definitely, when I got into coatings in late 2013, I had to upsell what the chemistry was, what the benefits were, all these great things. Now people are banging on the door. Oh, do you have this? Do you have that? I want ceramic. I yep. want ceramic. And yep. they all know what, I mean, I think most consumers nowadays do know what ceramic is. Yeah. We still get some that hear about the horror stories about them and that are very skeptical about getting a ceramic. And it's like, oh boy, here we go. Because they're like, I just want a wax. And it's like, I don't even have a wax service. Yeah, like, right. <laughs> what, what am I supposed to do with that? Like, that doesn't do much for me as a, as a business owner at all anymore. I mean, wax has its place. Don't get me wrong. But where I see it in my local community is dealerships, auctions, a lot of mobile guys because of it being very user friendly for that purpose. It still allows them to make a buck. Um, so I feel that there's that place there. Car shows, some guys, you know, with some of these cars that, the value on them they don't want to compromise that and not that it would but in their mindset wax is just the easier way because it never sees the elements anyway so why would it need a coating essentially right so there's a lot of purposes for those traditional products but i still think that ceramic is the most relevant and and, and the most superior way to go along with any other additives that are being added to make it better i agree and i think you know kind of touching on the point that you said too when ceramics kind of first were hitting, I mean, even not even just first hitting the market, but I'd say even as recently as even a couple of years ago, you know, a lot of consumers were like, oh, why am I going to pay, you know, whatever, a couple thousand dollars for this, you know, full fledged ceramic coating when I can go to the dealership and I can get, you know, their $800 paint protection package. And so I think that was a lot of, you know, consumer education as well. And educating yep. the consumer that, you know, there, there's nothing wrong necessarily with, you know, that paint protection package at the dealership, but it is on a completely different playing field. You know, it, know. it is, it's not even, it's not even in the same universe <laughs> as to, you know, what kind of protection packages they're offering at a dealership versus, you know, the ceramic coating that you can get done again by a professional uh, detailer that some cars can, you know, some cars could take two days yeah. depending upon the condition that they're in. And, and, you know, there's a lot of time that goes into it. Oh gosh. Yeah. They're definitely, especially if you get somebody who beats up on a car during the new car prep right out the gate, you're getting damaged goods as a customer buying a purchase. And, or and that's a what a lot of, and I like what you just said right there too, about being just a new car. You know, just because it's driving off the lot brand new doesn't mean it doesn't need, you know, any kind of paint correction done to it. No. And again, I think a lot of uh, people, you know, my husband works for a car dealership and you should see some of these cars that come from the port. You know, he's selling Porsches, really high end cars, beautiful paint jobs, but they still need at least like a one step paint correction. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of fallout in the paint. And again, that just kind of, the reason that prepping a vehicle prior to ceramic coating is probably the most important step of the entire process yeah. and not just throwing it on there. No, I mean, that's, yeah. And people request that they don't realize they're asking to skip that. That's like, I have a, the outside of your house, you know, 
paint being super chalky and telling the painter, yeah, just paint over that. Don't pressure wash exactly. it, don't prep it. And the, and the painter's like, ah, the paint's going to pop. No, I, no, it's not going to, it's fine. It's like, if you right. know more than why are you hiring me? <laughs> What's the <Exactly>. point? <laughs> but no, to yeah. your point though, from talks in the industry, from what I've learned is that 70% of the vehicles in North America that from the manufacturer to the dealership undergo some kind of cosmetic repair that's not even documented, whether it yep. be at the manufacturer or at the dealership, somewhere during transit or when it got to new car prep, there's so many variables that literally you're looking at upwards of 70%, which I thought was just crazy to hear, but you don't know this because it's not documented. So as detailers, as we're polishing on a vehicle and we reveal a blend or something, this is where we have to cover our butt and document as we go the whole time. Cause I've had it happen to me. And because of how well I documented it, it went back to the customer, customer went back to the dealer, the dealer just took care of it. And they know that there was no fault on our behalf. But if I didn't document that, that's where I would have been screwed because the first thing the dealer says, and I'm not knocking dealers, but this is what usually happens. The detailer did it. Oh, yep. it was the detailer's fault. Who did you have work on your vehicle? Oh, it must be them. They're incompetent. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's, it's, it's a headache sometimes. I mean yeah. And you're hundred percent right too. I mean, again, my, my husband, he tells me all the time. I mean, there's, there's a ton of cars that come in that again, there is no paper trail that said, Oh, it fell off the back of the transport vehicle and we had to replace the bumper or, you know, I mean, there's a lot of times there, there is nothing. And, you know, you got to really know what you're looking at. And my, my husband could probably, you know, be a detailer because now he's like dialed in. <laughs> he makes sure he goes over that car with a fine tooth comb and, you know, he knows every single little thing to look for to see if it has been repainted or touched up. And sometimes they do it at the port. Yeah. You know, which is crazy, but you yeah. know, they're, they're doing these repairs and these, you know, kind of on-site paint jobs at the port yeah. before it even gets transported to the dealership. Not the best environment and not the best no. <laughs> craft to say either. It's just a quick no. here. It's done. It's out. Go. It's inventory. They don't care about the badge the brand, none of that matters. It's all inventory. Yep. But, you know, going back to just some advice that, and I could be wrong for this, but I haven't seen any negative <laughs> return or impact to this. So like you had mentioned the dealerships, mm -hmm. they offer their paint protection. They offer their insurance. They leave. We all know that the insurance is pretty solid most of the time, but the tangible product is typically or traditionally a paint sealant. And we know in Florida, you're roughly six to eight months. Can you get a little bit more? Yes, based on care, maybe the product itself. But roughly speaking, a, a solid paint sealant is in a six to eight month range. Well, a lot of our customers that come in that have that done, what, what detailers don't know is that you could actually go ahead and strip that, move forward with the coating of what you're offering. And that customer will have a more tangible and beneficial product on the vehicle but that doesn't void the insurance because at the end of the day, it's still performing. And if you brought it back for somebody to inspect it, that applied that sealant and it's performing as good, if not better, then obviously that person's going to assume that that's that product they originally put on. Right. So technically you could still have a customer and they could still exercise that insurance. And I, I, I this may Maybe a gray area. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. But just to put it out there for the detailers in regards to some advice to where you could get them out of that dealership paint sealant into a coating and they could still basically exercise that guarantee or warranty that they paid for from the dealership. But yet your product's on there. Now you're maintaining it. So that right. way you're able to gain a customer out of a situation like that. Yeah. And there, there definitely might be a gray area there. I definitely don't. I, don't, I can't comment on the actual you know, warranty insurance side. But you know what we have found a lot of, and again, not not knocking the, the dealership and you know on the F and I side, the programs that they offer, but you know dealerships they're high volume and they they do need to get cars kind of in and out. You know they can't spend two days, you know really doing a full fledged uh, ceramic coating on a vehicle. Some can. I mean if they do have you know a dedicated uh, detailer that's been trained then, you know, some can offer that. But what we've told a lot of our, you know, 
customers and detailers that have asked us is, you know, tr even try to partner up with the dealership, go into a dealership, put a package together and say, you know, I can come to your facility, your dealership. And so that way you're on, you know, their insurance, you're on their facility. You're not moving the cars all the way around. Yeah. Um, and, you know, charge a flat price to the dealer for what you would charge to apply that ceramic coating. And the dealer can put their markup on it. At the end of the day, it's, it's a win-win for everybody. They're not it using is. any of their labor, you know, to apply this coating. And if they've got, you know, partnerships with, you know, a few shops locally in the area, they might be able to get five cars knocked out in a day or two days. I mean, you know, obviously the dealerships, like any business, I mean, you know, they want to make money, but being able to offer, you know, a true like high end uh, ceramic coating at a dealership level, we have seen a lot of detailers that have a lot of success again, going into these dealerships and offering their services, you know, on site as like an independent uh, rep. Yeah. So no, do I've you have any detailers? And, yeah. Do you have anybody in your area that does that? No, a lot of the, my, you know, every area is a little different, you know, some that works out very, very well and it's successful going that route. Um, some of these dealerships like around here, some that are vetted that have been around for a while, I, I believe they're just so used to turn and burn with vehicles that they need it done yesterday that trying to go to a detail shop that's already booked, whether they have one lined up or five lined up, it becomes inconvenience, porting the vehicle, getting yeah. on their schedule, because they want to be able to just get it done for the customer, get it out, make their money on to the next. And that's kind of the mentality that has been here locally. So unfortunately, there's not much of a pairing for that other than maybe some lot washes where you get these mobile guys who go around and wash their vehicles for five dollars a vehicle and you know knock out 30 of them in a couple hours or something ridiculous like that but that's that's about the only partnership i've seen um there is the local porsche dealership that i've i've over the years being in business here 13 years it's i've seen some ups and downs and um they they brought in and subbed out uh people from as far as orlando to come in but then, oh, wow. yeah, it was a conflict because of timing. You know, I need you today. Well, I've got a job today. Well, then we don't need you no more. And it's like, whoa, wait a second. You know, and that's that's just how a lot of them operate. They're they're cutthroat and they're dry in regards to I want it done yesterday, and they don't have no remorse in regards to just getting rid of you, even if they've used you for a couple of years. So, right. unfortunately, the the bridges get burnt and the word gets on the street that they're that way. So nobody wants to work for a company like that. Not or, I mean, an, a, right. I mean, another, I guess, piece of advice or again, things, and this is just stuff that I've seen, you know, recently and over the years is, you know, these detailers becoming friends with some of these sales reps, right? Yes. And when, especially at, you know, higher end dealerships that when they sell a car, hey, you want your car ceramic coated? If the dealership doesn't, again, already offer it, mm -hmm. then, you know, referring them to, you know, somebody locally in their area, and maybe that detailer gives the sales guy whatever it is, you know, 200 yeah. bucks for that referral fee. Some kind of incentive. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, I mean, that's been, I think, pretty successful as well, because you're right there, you know, there's times that the dealership, they want it done now, and they have an hour. And, you, you know, you've got an hour to get here, or they're calling somebody else. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes, Again, partnering up we keep going back to this partnering and collaborating and, you know, building relationships, but seriously, I mean, that's really, it's, you know, every, any business you're in is all about that and thinking outside the box sometimes too. It's like, okay, I ran into an objection here. The objection is the dealership, you know, doesn't have, I've, I've got to be on their, you know, on their schedule and their yeah. time frame. So, you know, what's a way for me to overcome this objection? Okay. Let me go talk to some of the sales reps. You know, maybe they can just start referring me some business, letting their customer know ahead of time, hey, you know, we'll get you on the schedule maybe within a week, but here you go, you know, call, um, you know, this ceramic coating installer and, you know, just again, kind of putting people in touch that way too. I mean, th there's always ways to overcome objections and there's always ways to, I mean, you know, don't give up. <laughs> 
you no. get a no, keep going, you know, keep find, maybe find another way to, you know, to, to get in somewhere or to go after what you want. I mean, you know, you're going to get a lot of no's, especially starting out. Yeah. You're going to hear a lot of no's and you can't get discouraged. Yeah. And the more no's you have or get, the closer you get to a yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, and I agree. The relationship is absolutely where it's at because you do look at it in perspective to where you've got the guy who has the relationship with the guy who was the go-to guy at the dealership. And because it became more than business and also personal, they're more likely to be a big part of that family with that dealership as to where the guy that just goes in for the interview gets the job, does good work, but doesn't build just mainly business. Just do the work, get the check, do the work, get the check. Granted, doing great work, but that's also where it becomes more of a dry situation to where they could just get cut off. But yep. you're right. Relationship is everything because that could make or break how everything works out with being there and doing work for them overall. Exactly. Yeah, yep. I agree. Exactly. So the cool thing is with, with your position, you've been able to see all these different inner workings, you know, from the auction to your husband working at the dealership and getting that feedback daily, you know, having the brand ambassadors on and in the field or in the trenches to say of, mm -hmm. of doing the work. And then of course you being at the manufacturing facility of where it all starts, the foundation of the product. So you have a very well-rounded perspective of everything and when it comes to the industry, which is awesome because you play this role of being able to have all this going on, especially within 13 years, you killed it. And, Thank and, you. <laughs> and being a female at that, that's just, that's just more of a feather in the cap, like, ha ha. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that, yeah, that's, that's really cool being able to see that. And that's where, you know, a brand like yours with Park Candy, you know, it's, yes, it's, it's developed here in Florida. It is a Florida based product, but it's, it's, reaching that national recognition in regards to what you're doing and the, and the vision you have. And I, and I can see that because, you know, even being at Southern Detailers Conference, you know, there are definitely more and more people that are familiar with the brand and it has the, the ambassadors have helped that quite a bit along with your, yes. with your actions yes. as well. And that's the exciting part too, is, I mean, for me as an owner and even the brand ambassadors, you know, they get excited too, because again, I, you know, the brand ambassadors, a lot of them really become family. Yep. You know, it might start off as that business relationship, but then it turns obviously more into a friendship. And, but being, you know, at Southern Detailers in Kentucky, obviously we're outside of Florida and hearing the detailers come up to our booth and they're like, oh yeah, I've tried this, I've tried this. And they might be from, you know, California somewhere. I mean, it is so exciting when it's like, okay, you know, after 13 years, you know, it's like the hard work's really paying off and you know the brand like you said it, it's people are becoming more and more aware of the brand and you know we're we're constantly innovating too and doing more marketing and you know our big push obviously is getting more distribution across the US we're even working on some opportunities um, you know outside the US to do some export to other countries so, you know, we've got a lot of exciting things in the works and we're just getting started. 13 years is nothing in regards to, you know, the, the big picture and the brands that have been kind of in the scene for, you know, since the 1930s, some of them. I mean, yeah. they've been around a really, really long time. So, you know, I'm just super, super excited and to see in even five years where we're at and then another 30 years and hopefully leaving a legacy behind and, you know, really building a brand that I can be proud of. And hopefully, you know, if I ever have kids, <laughs> it needs to be soon. Uh, <laughs> but if I do have kids, you know, I would never force my kids into something they didn't want to do. But just again, being able to have that opportunity, if they were interested in it, to, you know, again, building a brand and building a company that is really focused on those family, you know, family values and building relationships. You know, I've got relationships with every single one of my distributors. I'm their go-to. They, they, they contact me directly, you know, any product questions, uh, issues, how to, you know, getting them. I mean, anything, my, my phone, email, you know, it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I love those relationships, you know, and I, 
I really treasure those relationships because it's, like I said, it's, it's helped us grow and it's gotten us to the point that we're at. And I just want to keep building, you know, more and more relationships. And like I said, asking a lot of questions. <laughs> That's really, I think, what's going to, you know, help get the brand to that national, you know, recognition. No, I agree. Now, as far as, you know, you know with, with events, um, you know, you, you're deep, um, mobile tech, you've mm -hmm. mobile tech now, you're part of that um, Southern Detailers Conference. How about SEMA? Are you looking forward to attending in some, at some level? So, I mean, I do go to SEMA every year and of course walk the show, uh, which you can't do in one day. You <laughs> definitely need, <laughs> you need three or four days to walk that show because it's massive. Um, we do have that, you know, hopefully in the, in the works for, I would say a few years from now. Uh, I feel like right now, these kind of local shows, you know, we started doing trade shows maybe three years ago. Mobile tech was probably our first trade show. Yep. Uh, SEMA is the big dog, so to say, <laughs> out of all of them. And, you know, I think with a few more trade shows under our belt and we'll be ready to definitely set up at SEMA and get started again, you've got to start somewhere. I know SEMA, you kind of start in the back booths and then, you know, you work your way forward as time goes on with seniority. So, you know, I need to, I need to get in there now as we're, again, as, as we're growing. I think that would be a very cool booth too, because of the whole car candy thing. I mean, you know, even being yeah. at Southern Detailers Conference with Anthony did to the, to the candy shop van to say, I mean, just yeah. little things like that, because of the title, you're able to do so much cooler things in, yeah. in regards to your marketing and how you set up your booth, other than just being a brand in the name and trying to figure it out. You've got so many options out the gate to play with. Yeah. And that's, you know, one thing too, obviously I love about the brand itself is it's fun. Yeah. You know, when we, again, when we first released Chocolate Thunder, I, people are like, seriously, you're naming something Chocolate Thunder? And I'm like, but listen, that name is going to stick and yep. everybody is going to know what that product is. And again, fast forward now, what, 10, 13 years later, and they do, but you're right. I mean, the brand itself, I wanted something fun, different, especially for the detailing industry. Uh, I think that's maybe where the female touch comes in a little bit too, is, you know, making something bright, fun, playful obviously high quality products but at the same time the brand itself is just fun you know there's there is so much that we can do with the brand and the marketing um but also you know our, our certified installers or our distributors there's so much you know i get calls constantly like i love the brand name you know that that's the first thing that attracted me to the product was just the name itself like there's so many cool things you know we can do with the brand and, you know, my distributors, again, they, they are really, you know, very brand loyal and they're excited too to kind of, you know, be a part of something that they want to see, you know, where it's going to be five, 10, 15 years from now. You know, I wouldn't consider it us a startup anymore, obviously after 13 years, but again, brand, um, building that brand is, you know, having these relationships and these people that again really believe in what we stand for and our products and you know again just the company itself i mean it's as an owner it's just it, it it's super it's super exciting like the opportunities are endless and yeah. I, I can't wait that's awesome so with that we are coming up on our time uh which oh, I wow do. that went by fast i know see <laughs> see <laughs> and it was easy and straightforward, right? Yeah. Uh, pretty fun too. And I enjoyed it. So thank you. And, you know, as far as um, how would people get a hold of you? What's, what's, how can they reach out to you, whether it be social media, uh, website, mentioned a couple different plugs. So we do have, you can purchase um, some of our products in smaller quantities and quarts and gallons are sold on our website, which is carcandy.com. And you can order online. We do have some, you know, starter kits on there as well. If anybody wants to try products, and actually, what I will do for this podcast is I can set up a coupon code 
uh, for anybody that maybe hasn't tried our products yet, and if they're interested in trying our products out, then I can set up a coupon code for our website. Um, I'm gonna do it right now as we're talking here. So that coupon code will give you 20% off your first order to try us. Very nice. And it'll be RAL20, Reflection Artist Live 20, but RAL20. So that'll be live, you know, as soon as we get off this podcast. And then we have our candycoatpro.com website, which is for our ceramic coating line. Um, that is a completely separate website from Car Candy because you can register to become a certified installer on there. Uh, that's also the website you would go to to register your customer's warranties uh, for our six year and our nine year coating. And it also you know, gives you just a lot more information about our glass coating that we offer that I forgot to mention, which is two year glass coating. Uh, some of our, you know, SiO2 uh, kind of topper sprays. And then we do have an Instagram page as well and a Facebook page. So of course, follow us, hashtag us, um, get, write us messages. You know, we, we respond back usually within an hour. But you can also, you know, just Google us and, uh, you know, call our office. Like I said, I'm, I'm always available too. Maybe not always available. I may be on a podcast with Justin Lobato, but, um, <laughs> but when I'm not, you know, I'm again, I'm, I'm always available to answer questions. Awesome. And then as far as some words of advice to our viewers and anybody <laughs> listening, what would you have that you think would be very helpful for those? Oh gosh, I feel like I've given a, a lot of advice. You have, you um, have. I mean, Again, business in general, you know, success does not happen overnight. Um, I don't think you can teach somebody work ethic. I think I learned that from you know my dad, who again is has been kind of like my mentor on the business side. But you know, work ethic is everything, and you gotta you got you gotta hustle at first. I mean, it, it doesn't. If it was easy, everybody would do it. And, you know, running your own business, you know, there, there's a lot of things that can maybe happen along the way, but the reward at the end is, I, I can't even explain it. And you probably know the feeling too, is that success. And it's not always about money. It's just knowing like, wow, look what, you know, look, look what I have built here and look what I've done and look how many people I'm helping. I mean, there's so much to be said for that, but Words of advice, work hard. <laughs> if I'm going to keep it short and sweet, I mean, you know, work hard, don't give up, build really good relationships, um, get as much knowledge as you can, do a lot of research. Internet's a beautiful thing these days too. Uh, you know, watch a million YouTube videos if you have to. I mean, there's so many ways you can get information now in, you know, five seconds. Um, but again, just, you know, relationships don't give up keep going <laughs> i like it thank you and this is you know great words of advice especially from a female entrepreneur in our industry just blazing the trail in the 13 years of what she's done you know she's, she's kicking butt so thank you ashley i much much appreciate you being on again for especially with july women in detailing um and telling your story which is very inspiring and those you know that think they've got something holding them back. There's nothing holding you back other than yourself. So yep. there's always obstacles. That's how you get over around or just go through it kind of scenario. But look, then, look at them as opportunities. Those obstacles should be opportunities. Bingo. Yeah, hundred percent. So this is uh, Reflection Artist Live podcast number thirty-seven with special guest Ashley Nye, who is owner and president of Car Candy Products. So. Again, if you want to reach out to her, she left all of her information. If you want to find out more about the product, she left that as well. And thank you. Thank you very much, Ashley, for being on and taking your time out of the day. And I'm going ahead and cut loose and go find my daughter who took off on me. Okay. And <laughs> okay. <Thank laughs> I know where she's at, me. but I just can't <laughs> see her. So I'm almost wondering what she's getting into, considering she brought me all the wipes I needed. Oh, you got all of them now. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, <laughs> but thank you again, Ashley, and everybody listening. Thank you for taking your time out. And if you want, you know, catch us on other podcast uh, platforms. Uh, we're on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Buff and Shine, and Reflection Artist Live. So, thank you, Ashley, and have a great rest of your day. Okay, you too. Thank you, Justin. Bye. 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 -bye.